Welcome to the start of a new anime review series. This one I'm reviewing, My Bride is a Mermaid, Part 1. This one I'm reviewing, the first four episodes of the series. Yeah, this is a quite interesting series, and it's hilarious. Like, I couldn't stop laughing a lot of the time watching these episodes. Mm -hmm. This series aired back in 2007, from April to... Frickin' September. Yep. They did release a couple OVAs, like Raft, the series ended, but that will be discussed in later. Yes, yeah, surprisingly, the series only covered the first 28 chapters of the manga. Yes, I have read the manga, but I didn't exactly finish it. Well, you're probably thinking, why did you finish it? Well, there's a good reason. Three of the chapters are now available online to read. And those are chapter 35, 37. But I did read pretty much the majority of the series. Mm hmm Yeah. It does seem odd, though, the fact that they stop after like, just 20 chapters in just 26 episodes. And you probably guess, like, what episodes were that? Which episodes were that episodes? Well, the answer, I have no idea. That's the thing. I don't. Well, there kind of is a reason for that, and that is the fact that the Wicca site didn't list up anything. As a matter of fact, the Wicca site is barely there. I mean, it has character profiles, has information about the episodes, but as for what chapters it depths, nope, has no information about it at all. Mm -hmm. Who are the characters? First, you have Nagasumi, voiced by the ever awesome Todd Heppercorn. His parents, who, by the way, have no names at all, they're referred to as simply his father and mother. And I'm like, really? And you have to give names for the main the female lead of the series, San Sato. And she's voiced by Alexis Tipton. Which, I don't, as far as I can tell, this is the first series she's done together with. Oh, he both tied up her core. I think you worked on Fairy Tail for that was. Yeah, like yeah, she worked. She voiced the character of Melina, mm -hmm. Meliana, and she was recently the voice actress for the character Iris from Fire Force. Yep. Other characters in the series. Well, there's her father, Goro Sato, voiced by John Sweeney. Yeah, this guy is. If you watch these episodes, he's like the comic relief of the show because he's so hilarious. Over the top antics, and of course you have his you have his wife, beautiful woman. Now I saw her look. I'm like, wow! I saw his look in a different series. I'm not going to say what name of the series is. It's just that well, it's not a series I would prefer to review. Would not prefer to. Do. That's basically a side thing. Mm -hmm. She's voiced by the awesome Stephanie Young. Mm -hmm. I've heard her voice in a few series. One noteworthy one is voicing the character of Nika Robin from One Piece. Yep. Now we also have the body. We have basically a guy in the series who basically has an afro. Yeah, okay. Tall guy. Likes talking about how much of a man he is. Who is he voiced by? The awesome Christopher Sabat. Yes, this guy. This makes like about 22 series. I've heard his voice. and like, damn. I was so surprised that to actually, when I first saw this, I was like, really? He's in this series? Huh. And apparently, this is kind of way weird though, apparently he sort of has, uh, have a couple people who have a fetish for him, which is kind of weird. Yep. You also have the character of Maki, voiced by Monica Real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's a Funimation regular. Mm hmm Yeah. Now there are other characters in Juice in the series, but those are the ones that pop up in these episodes. Maki shows up in episode three. The episodes the first episode starts off with pretty much sort of a flash forward, they kinda of back up a bit, where you have Nagasaki drowning but being saved by the beautiful sun. 
And in case you're wondering, how old are these two? 14. Yeah, 14. And should you say about him? But before before I continue, like right afterwards, we have sort of a flashback of Nagasaki, right? With his parents in in the the small town where his grandmother lives, and she, well, they hang out for a bit. They get, they basically have dinner the next day. So I was like, let's go swimming because there's a beach nearby. And he nearly drowns. That's when he basically comes up, finds him. Of course, they think he's crazy when he talks about the Boys of Mermaid. Well, that is until his son shows up at his grandmother's doorstep and asks him to come with him because that's be his bride. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, this is so hilarious the fact they act this way. Yeah, and some of the animation for this series is very similar to Triple X Holic. Well, I know the character movements. It may be that the people who some people who worked in the series did also work in Triple X Holic or something. Because, like, they're like, Ugh. It's so hilarious. Or basically those shock and basically drop dead moments. It is so funny. And then, of course, that's when Christopher Sabbath's character makes it. Deep. Masa. And he says, come with me. My boss wants to meet with you, so... He takes Nagasaki, his parents, they kind of carries him, and then tosses him in the water, nearly drowning. But they take him to Sato's house. To the son Sato's house, who's underwater. Yes, underwater. And they meet his, they meet son's over-the-top, very loud father, played by John Sweeney. I'm surprised this guy wasn't played. Now, I get why they chose John Sweeney, because... His voice is absolutely perfect for this character. Sabbath would not be able to do this character justice because this guy is so over the top. Though, he's very he's very afraid of his wife, but it's like, damn. He has a very beautiful wife. No denying that. And they're all mermaids. Well, merman and mermaids. And here's the thing. When they're swimming down before they get to the sun at this house, sun actually... Basically, holds Nagasaki when he gets to their house, and it looks like a traditional Japanese mansion. And they mention, "Oh yeah, because you saw we have to kill you." And Son's like, "No, kill me instead." And then he's, and then they have this little thing where he escapes. So Sunset helps helps him escape. And then, in order to avoid being killed, he says, he basically asks for permission to marry his daughter. Basically, the mother agrees right away. He, of course, really still wants to kill him. So badly. So, yeah, that was the first episode. Second episode, well, when they're engaged, they go on a date. And this is the second series I've watched where you have two characters hook up, and in the second episode, we have the first date. Though, unlike in my, my, my first girlfriend, Sakal, where they went to do karaoke, this one, they went to a culture festival. Okay. And, and of course, the place is staffed by people who work for Girls of Burrow. And while Sun gets these big, huge things of eating, he gets nothing at all. And, and of course, she knows something up when she sees the shark. Yeah, this is basically her father's pet shark. It's like, like I knew something was up because I see this freaking shark. Yeah. And apparently, both her parents basically have this festival, along with Nagasaki's parents. Yep. Oh, I forgot to mention this before I continue. When they arrive underwater, I thought this was so kind of bizarre. Like, really? They thought this was okay to do? Oh, in case you wanted this to happen, manga? Yes, it did. Where it's like, okay, you think you won't wake up? He tells Maza, mouth to mouth. Like, oh, crap. And he kind of basically gives... Nagasaki, his first kiss, which apparently he has sort of a boy, my man crush on him. Like, yeah, it's kind of the strange thing. Heck, even his mother has got a thing for him. Yes, his mother, who's happily married to his father, uh, well, Nagasaki's father, and yet she has to develop a thing for him. Yeah, and it's revealed that he's actually a ladies' man. Yep, a ladies' man. Yep, and... So, Nagasaki decided something very nice for Sato, buying her a ring. 
Well, it's not exactly a rearing. Basically, it's the first Presley buffer. At one point, they get lost, but lucky enough, Gozaburo finds it, and they toss it around and ends up on Masa's finger. Though this happens right after a misunderstanding that she had, where Sun basically over Masa teaches him dance. Yeah, it was like dancing with him. It's like, no, he just teach me something. It's like, okay, clear that up. Yep. And, yeah, it's pretty simple enough. And then the next episode, like, of course they have fun. And then, of course, now, this is by far the first time you see her in a Komodo. Yeah, the Komodo that she wears in this episode is also on the cover of the first manga book. Yeah, that's, I thought it was quite interesting the fact they did that. Then when she first showed up, she wasn't wearing this kimono. She basically wore like a normal outfit any girl would wear. Yep. Actually, when she first showed up, basically you see her bikini top when she first shows up. Mm -hmm. The very next episode basically is revealed. And actually, for how they go back to back home because their project they got moved up. So, so and of course, then of course, Sun brings them to deserted island. Of course. Masa basically brings in, and this will reduce to Maki, the tiny person who apparently is an old friend of Sun's, does deeply care about her. Mm -hmm. And we see Sun for the first time in a bikini. So, you know what this means? A beach episode. Yep, a beach episode. See her in a bikini. Because why not? Because it seems like almost every series I watch has to have something like this. Not every single one per se, but a lot of them do. Goblin Slayer clearly did it. Probably because they're in the countryside and he probably couldn't go to a beach in that series. Yeah. And they basically hang on the beach for a while. They go swimming. And Maki, of course, the, of course, this starts the recurring gag of her trying to kill Nagasaki. Yep, tries to shoot him, tries to stab him. Eventually she overhears stuff she says. And Sun's like, don't do that, he's my fiancé. Or at least my future husband. And of course he reels on the way back that he has to go home. Son's like, yeah, I'll go with you. And of course Maki comes along too. And here's the thing. Maki gets along fine with with Nagasaki's mother. No problem at all. So they get basically go home at the start of episode 4. Which is also the last time you see Nagasaki's grandmother. Yeah, that's the last time you see her. Mm -hmm. Yep, so... They ran at the house, and I see the house, I'm like, yeah, this is a perfectly normal house, and not the first house I've seen that looks like this. Yeah, it looks like simply like a two-bedroom house with an attic, and it's two-story. Yeah, a lot of the series basically watch me like this. I mean, the only other series I can think of that had a house that basically house like this. Um, let's see. High School DxD definitely had one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that definitely did. And you probably think, wait, what about Rama Half? No, not really. I'd say probably Indie Wash would probably like that too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I'd say it's happened a few series, but simple two-story house. But I wouldn't be surprised because of what type of series this is. We might get a bigger house. Yeah. Oh, there was one of the series. I did see a house that looked similar to this, and that was... Testament of this new devil. Yeah, that was another series where I saw the house look almost exactly like this. Mm -hmm. And, well, as far as, like, hey, move into this room, which happened to be Nagasaki's room. It's like, what? And, of course, they kind of bicker back and forth. And, of course, eventually he gets the attic. And then, of course, well, he reluctantly gives up his room to his fiance and her mini assassin, which apparently the mother basically adores like, like a little baby, though, like a little doll. So, they pretty much set up the room, basically, for Sun, and for some reason, because she's part of the, the Sato group, have a bunch of land that say Sato group across her windows. Why? No idea why. It's particularly quite dumb. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then, of course, in the very next episode, in this, of course, episode 4, we get to Mara Zagita. Nagasaki's childhood friend, the daughter of the police chief, though she first in the dub as the superintendent, but technically police chief, and she's part of the Disma committee. 
yeah, I thought this was quite. This was a weird scene when they introduced her. Of course, they, of course, how they get to this point is that they say, "I go shopping and leave Maki behind." Yep, of course, Maki looks so sleeping, so they sneak out and they go shopping. And of course, she's gushing at everything, all the stores. Yep, probably because she's never been here before because she's from the countryside. So whatever, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a shopping episode. Yep, a shopping episode. I don't have a real big problem with this in the series at all. It's fine. It just basically the characters having fun. Mm -hmm. This is mentioning, of course, these two guys were hitting on these two students. And, of course, well, he's going to stop. But uh, that's when Mucky shows up. And tells us basically back off. And, of course, the girls leave quietly. And, of course, you have, well, <laughs> you have, like I saw, I could do a really stupid way basically grabbing these guys and jumping up the bridge with them. Lucky enough, he says, oh yeah, Lucky enough, the river is so deep. And they come up and they try to hurt him, but lucky enough that like I, Ma Ma Maki, Maki just kicks him and and then Sun, underwater, decides to pull him under, screaming in their ear with basically the mermaid voice. Yeah, she revealed this back in episode two. <laughs> and well, yeah. I almost forgot that before I basically get to this part, I have to talk about the bathroom scene. Because it's a Japanese anime, set in modern day, so of course we have a a bathroom scene. We have like three of them. Yes. First one, of course, Nagasaki just chilling in the bath. And then Sun and Maki just happen to come in. And of course, Nagasaki accidentally sees her naked. And then Ma Maki just basically blows up the freaking wall. And of course, for the next day, that's when they go shopping. And in the episode, and of course, well, he because they have the dryer basically legs off, of course, with with Nagasaki's shirt, and of course, Maki starts shooting him up because, well, she really wants to kill him, and as Maki shows up and thinks that, oh yeah, well, because it's CC life, my killer, but treats a lot like a doll. He of course doesn't forgive him for this. We have no bath scene, shoots him up again because why not? And then we have a really interesting one. We have Maraki in the in the bathtub. And we don't see Sun and Noob, but we see her butt naked. Yeah. I don't know why, but we do. Yep. And that's pretty much the episode itself. Pretty good episodes. And one thing I did notice about the style of these episodes, it looked very similar to that Raid Master. Yeah, it looked very... It, I mean, could be... It, I kind of suspect it was probably the same studio who made Raid Master, but no. Not the same studio. It's probably because of the same style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one thing I did notice though. Even though the series came out in 2007, Rain Master came out in 2001 to 2002. This series came out six years later, but it looks like it was made with a similar style. And the whole crazy movie thing. Yeah, that could be basically fewer series that's like this. Heck, FOMO Alchemist had that thing like this too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was made by a completely different studio. Mm hmm. Yeah, but otherwise, that's really it for this particular review. Yeah, so tomorrow we expect to see mostly reviews for this series and, of course, Seven Daily... Well, actually, no, not Seven Daily Sins because season's over. So mostly just all this series tomorrow. Yeah, that's mainly due to the fact that Seven Daily Sins basically has finale last week, so no more episodes of the series for now anyways until freaking October. And no new chapters of the manga. Nope. No more chapters. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. Now, like with Trigun, basically, I'll do like mostly, if I can, do each part basically covering four episodes. Excuse me, but the series also has two OVAs, so this will be done in six videos. More likely to be done in like seven, which was the amount that Trigun was done in. Mm hmm. Yep. So yeah, until you see you on tomorrow's review, we're basically with part two, cover episodes five through ten. Okay. See you next video. Bye.